seven explosive techniques that you will not find anywhere else here on YouTube. Let's get into it. I like to ask my clients, hey, what is your most ideal confident version of yourself? And he said, I love the version of myself when I am drunk. If you've taken a few shots yourself and all of a sudden you found yourself dancing, singing, talking to people, being the most confident version of you, it makes sense because alcohol affects your prefrontal cortex first. So that's the area in which it affects your judgments, your reasoning, your self-awareness in general. Basically the uninhibited version of you comes out. Here is a hack and it is using a breathwork technique called the fire breath. The breath tempo is gonna go like this. It's actually quite fast. It's exhale, 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 exhale. It helps if you have your hand over your chest and one hand on your stomach. So you're breathing all the way in and then you're just using your nose, closing your mouth. If you can't do one or two minutes, do 30 seconds, work your way up. What you're really doing is you're over oxygenating your whole being, your whole body. And by doing so, the volume of that prefrontal cortex goes down a little bit. Obviously you can't do that all the time. So here's a simple hack that I've mentioned in another video of mine when it comes to public speaking and speech anxiety. I basically cut off my feelings in my thumb and you can do that by pressing this really hard. This is something you could do during a conversation people often will not notice, especially if you have a chance to hide your hand or put it in your pocket or wherever. It naturally will slow down my breath work. But if you wanna go straight to it, another tip, is to slow down your breath. So this is something Dr. Huberman actually uh, talked about in one of his podcasts. And if you don't know who Dr. Huberman is, he's a professor at Stanford University. He's a neuroscientist as well. So he, he knows a lot about uh, how the brain works and little hacks you can do. One of the things he mentioned is to do a double breath and an exhale. It's one long inhale, a quick inhale to top it off and an exhale. This is something you'll notice you'll naturally do if you ever had a heavy cry before, you'll go, <gasps> that's your body's natural way of calming your nerves down is the, <gasps> I already feel the effects, I feel the oxygen. <laughs> so that's something you can easily do when somebody else is talking, you wanna calm your nerves down, is the inhale, inhale, exhale. Demystifying the pedestal. So this is specifically for when you're talking to somebody that you deem is above you. Maybe it's your boss, maybe it's somebody you wanna impress for whatever reason, but you are putting them on a pedestal. And it could be that you are a speaker on stage and you're putting the audience on a pedestal. I'm just a big fan of demystifying the pedestal pedestal. But how do we do this in the moment? If you've gotten this far in the video, here's what I secretly used to do all the time. Whoever I'm talking to that is on a pedestal in my head, I would imagine something gross like snot falling from the sky and just hitting them as they talk or as they're standing, just hitting them. And it just looks so absolutely disgusting and disturbing that it makes me just want to oh <laughs> it makes me nauseated just thinking about it my mental focus shifts into being disgusted you have to use this carefully and obviously don't show this in your facial expression but when you are disgusted by somebody you no longer deem them as somebody above you just knock them down to your level just be careful you don't put them down here and you're just like oh like your existence is disgusting. <laughs> Just make sure you, you can gauge that for yourself. And all you have to do is play with it a little bit. You can obviously end your visualization whenever you want because your imagination is in your head. So you have full control over that. Be careful with this hack. Don't show it on your face. I can't do this video without mentioning verbal fluency. So if you don't already know what verbal fluency is, it's the ability and the speed in which you could get the content in your head and express it verbally out loud. So for example, if you ever had a time in which you were talking to somebody and then you got stuck on a word or that one thing, that one phrase, that one person's name, and it just couldn't come out. Maybe a minute later, maybe a day later, you're like, oh, that's what I wanted to say, but it's too late at that point. So 
in that moment, you had a low verbal fluency state. Essentially what happens when your cortisol level goes up because it is a stressful environment, in that moment, you're really relying on your base of neural pathways in your brain. So if that's not properly trained up or it's naturally a lot more weaker, oftentimes if you have ADHD, this is a constant thing, all you have to do is strengthen it. Just like people who go to the gym five, six times a week, it's going to be stronger. And yeah, maybe a person who's naturally strong, that's good for them. You are not one of those people. Okay, cool. Then go to the gym six days a week. This is something public speakers, like specifically politicians, will do because yeah, maybe they're really charismatic naturally, guess what? They want to be more charismatic. Guess what? They want to articulate themselves even better. So these are the little tiny hacks that they do on their own time in order to have improv conversations, which is just normal conversations, but having these high stake conversations and debates, etc., and be so eloquent in those moments, at least so, some some politicians, not all politicians. <laughs> if you want to learn more about how to do that verbal fluency at brain training specifically, I'll link that video down below. If you want to go in depth into verbal fluency in general, so beyond the brain training, I have my coursework, so I'll link that below as well. A lot of times when we start our sentences, we use a filler word. We'll use so well. Uh, instead, I would advocate using a framework sentence. Things like, here are my thoughts on that. Here's what I'm thinking. Let me walk you through my thought process. Number one, it comes across better, but number two, it actually frames your own mind to go, okay, I'm a cohesive person because I clearly framed myself this way. Now let me just get into it. If this is something that interests you, tickles your little brain <laughs> of growth, then yeah, subscribe.